Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. Specifically, part four of the DIY filter comparisons. Now, something interesting happened last week. The two filters that were up were the uh, reverse flow hob uh, with the planter aspect, the undefeated champion, and the new up-and-comer, the uh, modular version of the Matten filter. And they were dead tied. They're, when I did the scoring for this and getting it all set up for today's video, which was a couple days ago, uh, they're even. There was no way to choose between them besides just picking one, and I didn't want to do that. So we're going to do something slightly different today. Going to compare two new filters. Uh, two filters that I really like, uh, but we'll get to that. And what we're going to do in a week or two or three, depending upon how many more filters I can uh, scrape up with this uh, quarantine stuff happening, uh, we're going to then reintroduce first one against whatever current winner there is, and then the other uh, in the following week, and then hopefully eventually we will get to a final winner. And that is, that's my goal here. Uh, if we don't end up with too many more ties, at which point we'll just, I don't know, have a shared winner. We'll see how that all goes. All right, let's get on to this. This is my version of an undergrow filter. Specifically, this is the original filter, the one I did on, uh, let's see, when was that now? Uh, August of 2018, I did a video entitled A New Look to Undergrowl Filters, actually my uh, most viewed video, and thank you very much for all that. Uh, this is the original one. Uh, I haven't touched it since then. It has been running perfectly fine on this tank. Uh, all those little bits and pieces of what look like roots to you are actually roots. They're coming from the planter filter above, and that is probably about the only thing I'm going to change on this, because if you've been watching uh, the videos I've been putting out lately, I'm getting really fond of the high humidity version, and I'm going to probably switch this one over to that. But I'm not going to clean this filter. I'll just... Uh, take a pair of scissors and just trim those off and I'm going to keep this running and I run it as long as I can run it and it not had issues. If you remember I was originally concerned that uh, there might be buildup underneath the plate and I'd have biological filtration problems with this but none of that has occurred so far. So anyway let's get on to grading this. First up is its biological filter capacity. This is going to be one of its higher scores for sure because that's an awful lot of gravel, uh, even in this confined space. I mean, normally under gravel filters cover the entire bottom of a tank, but I haven't had any issues whatsoever with this. Even uh, lately, uh, lately because a lot of my clients can't get to their offices and whatnot, I have had, uh, I pulled out a lot of their fish and sort of put their tanks in semi-shutdown. And a lot of those fish have come here, so it's got, this tank has, Tetras, tiger barbs, guppies, it has a whole pile of stuff. Uh, most of those are all on uh, the other side of all these plants you're seeing here, uh, from the most of those actually falling down from uh, the planter filter above. But again, I haven't had any issues in fluctuations. I mean, that's a bunch of fish coming in and out, and a fair amount of traffic in this tank. And it still stays stable. Uh, there's no algal blooms, no nothing. Uh, so I'm going to have to give this a pretty high score for that. Now, the lowest score for biological filtration so far was the five-stage airlift, which got a six, and this is definitely better than that. The next up was a reverse flow hob, uh, and obviously that's a fair chunk of gravel again, and uh, a good flow of water through it. Uh, so we're talking in that neighborhood, and then next to the matten filter and the rolling drum both got eights on this. So this deserves somewhere between uh, seven and eight, probably, but because because this filter has been so reliable, I'm actually going to give it an 8. Because it is, um, well, <laughs> I can't fault it in any way, shape, or form. It is actually doing really well. And I do have other versions of it. Like this one here with the commercial uh, planting substrate. Initially, remember, I had some issues with it uh, in Hydra. But once I got that all straightened out, uh, it has settled down quite nicely. Uh, this one's not running on uh, any planter filters or anything. It's just in an aquarium, and it's doing a great job. And you can see it's growing uh, lots of moss and stuff. All right, next step, uh, mechanical filtration. 
Now, they're not the best mechanical filters, uh, obviously, because there's it's just the gravel there. Uh, but they do provide some mechanical filtration. You will end up with a bit of cloudy water, and obviously, of course, you're not going to put this with anything that digs. But that aside, if you put it in the right kinds of fish, it's actually reasonable. And I gave uh, the hob a four for this, uh, and I suspect it's going to be on par with that. Uh, it's not anywhere near as good, of course, as uh, anything that has an actual uh, pad that it filters through. Um, so, but like I said, it does do reasonably well that way. So I'm going to give it a little bit better than uh, the hob. I'm going to give it a five. I just noticed the time marker on this video as I'm doing the narration, and boy, I've been rambling today. Uh, I think I'm going to have to pick up the pace or this is going to end up being a 20-minute video. Next up is cleaning, and as I said in the beginning of this video, uh, that filter, and actually all the filters I've been running, haven't been cleaned yet, and that one has been up and running for a year and a half, and I haven't had to touch it. And there are no wear and tear parts. I mean, what do you give a score for that? I mean, I gave the Matin filter a 9, and it hasn't proved itself yet, and this has. So I'm going to do uh, what I wasn't planning on doing so early. I am going to give this a 10, simply because it has stood the test of time. And hopefully I won't end up regretting giving that, so I'll have to give it 11 to something else later. Uh, but we'll just uh, set that now and uh, move on to the next score. Last up for this filter is commercial viability. And it's going to rate quite high in this category, as long as you consider the fact that it can't go in any tank with diggers. So no African cichlids, no South American cichlids, uh, none of that sort of thing. But once you're uh, into the community aspect of this, it is actually very good because it's not going to have any visual impact. It's going to go in an aquarium, obviously, with gravel. So it's going to sit in the back corner. The tray and the gravel will all be flush uh, with a, the top of the gravel that's in the tank. And all you're going to have is the lift stack. So as far as impact and visibility goes, it'll be in the same kind of uh, category as uh, any kind of hob. The only way you can get less impact for visual, it would be to drill the tank and then hide uh, those stacks, or sorry, those, uh, those bulkheads. So it's going to do quite high that way. And I can't give it top marks because obviously it has the restriction of what kind of fish it will go with. But I'm going to give it a pretty good number. I mean... Obviously, um, the five stage has got really low marks, and so in with a rolling drum filter because you know you just can't use those in that sort of style. Uh, but it, it's going to be up there with the hob for sure. So I'm going to give this uh, an eight. So that is it for this filter, and uh, we're going to move on now to the second one. And let me know in the comments what you think of all these ratings. When deciding what filter to put up against the undergravel, I wanted to go with something else that has stood the test of time. Not so much just in my fish room, but in the world at large. So I decided to go with uh, the box filter. Now, this one here is the first one I made. Uh, I made it uh, June of last year, so it is doing really well. I haven't had any issues with it, and you've seen me clean it a few times. And this is the newer version, the one, I, the one I've actually been working with the most lately, and that's the two-stage version, the two-layer. And I'm showing you this particular clip here because you can see it's not very difficult to hide these or to disguise them. So I just want you to keep that in mind when we go down to the, the commercial aspects of this. This one here will be a little easier for us to look at while I go through the scoring for it. And as you notice in the base, uh, this particular one has ceramic rings. I have used... Uh, mostly uh, lava rock, uh, crushed coral, and uh, some of the newer ones I've been trying out just using plain gravel. I haven't had any issues with any of them. Um, they all work, so let's get on to uh, scoring for this. And now, first up is biological uh, filtration capacity. And again, I don't have any tank issues as far as uh, cloudiness, uh, fish not doing right, uh, wrong kinds of algae growing. And I've actually used, started using a couple of these in some larger uh, commercial setups that I have with slight modifications. Uh, and we're talking tanks that have uh, much higher uh, density for fish, like African cichlid tanks. I was planning on doing some updates for that, but unfortunately 
I can't get to those tanks at the moment, so uh, that will have to wait for another time. Um, but anyway, I want to rate these as as quite good. So we're looking at Hob, which is at seven. It's not at, up at the same sort of level as a rolling drum filter or matten filter, which I gave eights. But I think it's better than uh, the five stage, so we're going to give this a seven. Next up for this filter is its mechanical filtration capacity. And this is actually where this filter shines, I think, the most. It is really good at removing uh, fine mark particulate matter from the water column. And also because of the placement for the holes in this, it does actually remove a little bit of the mulm that would normally gather at the bottom as well. It doesn't do that a whole lot, uh, but enough just to keep in mind. I really like these filters if uh, I'm having a tank that's struggling. I can t take one of these and uh, pop it into it for a short period of time, and it really does help get things going properly. So mechanical, I would give this actually quite high. I mean, the hob uh, got a four, which doesn't matter. A rolling drum got a six. And the other two uh, were fives and sixes as well. And I think this is actually way better than that. I think this is the first number I'm going to give that is actually good for the filtrations for as far as mechanical goes. And I'm going to give this an eight. Next up is cleaning. Now this filter actually does need to be cleaned reasonably regularly, way more so than the undergravel filter. It is very easy to clean. This is a matter of taking the lid off. Uh, usually all I do is take the matte note, rinse it, and put it back in, and then plug it all back in, so it doesn't, doesn't take long at all to do. But because the undergravel filter hasn't been cleaned in a year and a half, and I think I clean these uh, on these low load tanks, I clean them about every uh, three or four months uh, on high low tanks like that African cichlid tank I uh, clean them monthly uh, so that should be taken into account for this so for cleaning uh, the matten got really high uh, the five stage also got really high uh, the rolling drum got low simply because of the mechanical aspects of the wear and tear but there isn't any of that on here and the hob of course got really high as well has a, so those are eights and nines for those guys uh, because of the frequency of cleaning, I'm going to give this a slightly less number, uh, simply because, again, you have to keep an eye on it. Uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't just keep on going and you can just ignore it. So because of that aspect, I'm going to give it a slightly lower number. I'm going to give this a 7. Last up for this filter is commercial viability. In this particular case, I've actually started using these in commercial tanks. Uh, initially, I started them off on... Uh, small community tanks for uh, daycares and that sort of stuff to test them out uh, to see how they would work when I only get to see them every three or four weeks and they worked really well there and then I uh, moved it up to one specific test system where I uh, have it in an African cichlid tank that's over about 120 gallons I have multiples on it there uh, but it is doing really quite well a little early I think to judge that but it does have I think uh, commercial viability. Obviously way more than the five stage or the rolling drum. Uh, I don't think it's in the same kind of category as the hob and probably not the same amount as even um, the undergravel filter. But I'm still going to give it a good mark. I'm going to give this also uh, another uh, seven. So there you have the two new filters. The undergravel filter which got a total score in the end of 31 and the box filter which got a total score of 29. Actually funny thing is I thought the box filter would come out a little higher than this. But my scoring actually doesn't matter at all. It's up to you guys. Uh, let me know what you think below. Uh, which of these two filters you want to go on to challenge the next one. And as always, even though this video has gone on really long, <laughs> I hope you like this style of video. And please like and or subscribe. And definitely leave comments. And I will talk to you in the next video. And bye for now.